Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunities that we have today to gather as a family, to gather around and hear your word that you would speak to us. Uh, as we hear these challenging texts, Lord, we can help us be thankful for all that you have given to us, giving your own Son to suffer and die for us. May that act inspire us to give, may that act inspire us to be thankful for all that you have given. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours this day from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for this morning's meditation comes to us from our Old Testament text. Amos chapter 6 will also be our gospel lesson as well. Luke chapter 16. And we're going to find that these texts really do parallel one another. Uh, the Old Testament is not a lot of good news. But of course we put alongside the gospel lesson and the gospel message that we know. I think we can come and, and see what God's word has in store for us. Us. Uh, but I did challenge you all last week, and it sounds like maybe a couple of you met the challenge. Some of you maybe looked a little clueless. What challenge are you talking about? Some of you had a look of guilt. But guess what? You have another week. God has gifted you with another week. Isn't God good? And you will have an opportunity to take on that challenge once again. And if you don't know what challenge I'm talking about, come and see me afterwards and I'll give you the challenge so you can have that week to, to take care of, of business. But these texts, they are pretty challenging actually. As we uh, see really from all three texts, the conversation about money and stuff. We're not talking about tithing. We're not talking about giving to your church. But really, the focus is on how do you look at your stuff? How do you look at your money? How do you look at the merchandise, the things that you have? Does it make you? Does it make you secure? Or are you secure in the one that gives you all of those things? Now, I think we know the answer to that. But as we look through Amos, look also at our gospel lesson, we'll see that there is that tendency to start to confuse those things just a little bit. If you will, pull out your reading. I want you to read with me. Look at Amos. I believe it's the first nine words. So just read up to the comma, okay? You see where I'm at? In Amos, the first nine words. All right, ready? Go. Woe to those who are at ease and silent. Okay, where are we? It's not the seven six eight. Oh my goodness, okay, 768, let's turn, we got time, right? This is the last service, we have all day. 768, 768, all right. Gotta make sure we get this, 768, that's a large word, it's uh, 970. In the large grid, it's what? 973, all right. Are we there? Amos 6. What verse are we on? One. Verse 1. That's right. Thank you. Verse 1. Just the first nine words. Are we ready? Okay, let's try it again. Woe to those who are at ease in the mind. Alright, good reading, but this is actually a word of warning. And so basically it sounded like you were telling me that my shoe's untied and I need to, to make sure that I'm not tripping fall, okay? The warning is a little bit more severe than that. All right, so let's try it again. Are you ready? All right, go. Woe to those who are at ease and die. Forget the minute. Maybe something hot is close by. You don't want to get touched, all right? But I want you to imagine or pretend that you are a prophet. God has told you that someone's salvation is on you. You have to go to this individual and tell them to turn from their ways. If they don't, they will be lost for all eternity. Not their life. Their eternity is at stake. So you have to get their attention. All right? So, whoa. What are you going to do? I, I need to hear. Ready? All right. Go. Whoa to those who are at ease and die. That was a good one. Nice. You scared me. As you read through the Old Testament, even earlier in Amos, all throughout, that's what those woes are all about. The prophets are telling you, be 
careful. Your life is on the line. Or if that's the circumstance is something that you are indulging in, you better be very careful. In fact, St. Paul even says in the New Testament, he says, Woe to me if I don't proclaim the gospel. Or death to me if I don't proclaim that word, that message of life. So what's so important? What's going on here? What is taking place? Oh, we have Israel, Samaria. There needs to be a little complacent in their life. They're starting to trust in stuff. They're starting to trust in their stuff instead of trusting in the Lord God who gave them all these things. So what is the stuff that they are trusting in? Well, what we see is that uh, their bed and their couches are made of ivory. Very beautiful, luxurious way of life. And how are they eating? <coughs> well, they're, they're eating on a regular basis the kind of stuff that you usually eat during like the high feast days, like Passover and the like. They're eating like, the lamb, and they're eating the calf or cattle that's in the stall. That means they're being fattened up. Right? Remember the, the, the prodigal son? How when the son came home, what did the father do? He prepared the fattened calf, right? You know, there's one. One you prepare. You save up for it. These guys are doing it on a regular basis. They're just constantly gorging themselves with food. How do they drink their wine? By the bowl full, right? And they have this great and beautiful amount of wine, very delicious, and, and they're not holding back. They're just drunk all the time, eating all the time, living as if they have no worries, living as if life is about them. And that's the warning isn't it? Now, of course, we have to understand, and Martin Luther says this, the Lord is not condemning the possession of wealth, but the misuse of it. That's easy to do. As I challenged you last week to go home and make a list of all the gifts God has given you, my guess is you ran out of time probably before you ran out of the gifts. If you were to write down all that God has given you and is giving to you now and will give to you, you know that it's just an amazing amount. It's not even looking at money, just the air, the breeze, the life, the, the siblings, the people in our life. God has given us so much. And of course, He's given us the greatest gift of all, no doubt. Because by His Son, Jesus Christ filled His life so that you and I, sinners, could be called children. the poor man. 
one who's going to have a need. But who is it that sits next to Abraham, the bosom of Abraham, sits next to all of these things that have gone before him? The one who is poor, the one who goes by the name of Lazarus, right? Jesus knows his name. And this is the one who will be able to be in paradise for all time. What about that rich man? We can assume that the text of Scripture that this rich man probably had his priorities out of the way. Thinking that he just had stuff, that was going to be enough. That's all you needed. And there certainly is that temptation, but the reality is that all people, rich or poor, on their own, deserve death. Woe to the rich, woe to the poor, woe to us. Because we are all poor, lowly sinners. Woe to us. While money certainly does give us assistance in life, it can't necessarily buy a healing. It might buy medicine, but it doesn't buy eternity. Woe to us because a successful business plan might get us out of debt. It cannot erase the ultimate debt, which is death. It can't produce freedom from congestive heart failure. It can't keep our lungs from having pneumonia. Woe to us. While high tech gadgets and big screen TVs might get our hearts beating fast, they can't make our hearts beat. Woe to us, because we might clothe ourselves with the most extravagant dresses and suits and shirts and clothing. But the veil of death is still upon us. Woe to us, because we all should get a punishment, and we would certainly be deserving of it. Woe to us, because nothing we have can go with us. Nothing we have can keep us from going into the pit of destruction. Unless you have the one thing. Unless you have that one possession. Unless you have that one thing that is absolutely necessary, that is absolutely needful, that one thing that God has chosen to give to you, that you might be freed from wrath, freed from punishment, that one thing is Jesus Christ. It's fine to be loved. It's fine to have stuff. It's fine to be in abundance. But what reassurance do you have in eternity? What reassurance do you have that when you breathe your last breath that there will be more to come? That reassurance is found only in Jesus because in death all men are poor. But in Christ even dead men are wealthy. In death, all men are poor, but in Christ, even dead men are wealthy. Because in Christ, men and women who are spiritually poor in Christ now have the greatest wealth of all time. They have eternal life in Jesus Christ. In Jesus, we understand that we have a hope. In Jesus, we understand that there is an assurance after this life. In Jesus, we understand that we who are poor in the Spirit will actually be lifted up into the eternal throne of God, that God knows our name, and we will be with Abraham and all the saints before us. This is who we are in Jesus because of his death and his resurrection, which is so beautiful and so great and so glorious, because at his death and his resurrection, as you read the account, you can only hear the greatest, the loudest woe. But it's not because of death. 
No, instead, this time that woe is proclaimed because death has finally died once and for all. And God has taken that veil in death and has removed it and clothed you with his righteousness for all time. God has given you a great amount of wealth, not that the wealth matters, but he gives you himself, he gives you his body that you can continue to feast upon it greater than any fat cat. He gives you his blood, beautiful wine, better than anything you could taste in the fruit of the vine out there. He gives you his blood for your forgiveness. God gives you each and every gift that you possibly need and more because he loves you, his children, so much. Merchandise, that'll wear out. Cars, they die. They get scratched up. <laughs> Righteous men die. But we proudly proclaim each and every day the greatest news ever. Jesus suffered and died for those who are poor in spirit. May our lives be loud proclamations. May we proclaim woe to our woes. Amen. Amen.